Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Newsgram. How many homeschoolers are out there? The fall of 2020 saw a huge rise in parents choosing to homeschool their kids. And that really shouldn't come as a surprise. There was a global pandemic going on and many school districts were closed. But then something happened. Lots of parents chose to just keep their kids at home. Whether it was mask mandates, faith and family issues, lifestyle choices, or maybe just the fear for their child's safety. The reality is homeschooling is now on the rise. And with my own kids choosing to parent this way, it's forced me into thinking about their point of view and to weigh the options. And while there are a number of pros and cons, I keep stumbling over one fact. Being a parent does not make you a teacher, just as I will never be a carpenter. But does that mean we can't be taught? Well, the thing is, when you become a parent, in hospital, they show you how to breastfeed, how you need to sit up and how you uh, have to hold your arm so you don't get a sore back and a sore shoulder. Uh, and by the time you are sent home, which is usually within a matter of days, if it is not the same day, you then are on your own. And you might have read all sorts of books about how to look after a baby, but doing it is another matter altogether. That is Frauke Matthews, author of the book How to Hold a Glue Stick and Other Clues to Parenting. Parents who choose to homeschool have all kinds of resources at their disposal. Now they don't even have to do it full time. There's a hybrid approach available in some states. I found Frauke's book to be a great resource because it's not only written from an experienced educator point of view, but one who embraces the principles of Maria Montessori. Now, in case you don't know who that is, Maria Montessori was a highly acclaimed Italian physician and educator. She developed an approach to education that was more like that of an engineer. It was about building on the way children learn naturally. And one of the things I liked most about her approach is that it made kids want to learn. And there were these other principles. Treat the child as if he is already the well-worth human being that you want him to be number one and the and the other one is that uh, that that isn't a method that is just a child so observe first and loving a child is not a prerequisite i mean it it will come when you pay attention and you observe and the more you know about your object or your subject the more you come to appreciate it and then suddenly you find you are actually loving it so much so that, you know, it hurts. That might sound strange to some of you, not to be sure if you love your child or not. Well, of course you do. But parenting can be hard, and it can make us doubt ourselves. This approach takes the emotion out of it, and it lets you focus on the task at hand. Tasks that sometimes seem extremely simple, like holding a glue stick. But in reality, it might be about a bigger problem, communication. This is the story that was also the inspiration for the book's title. A mom who was sitting at the table with her barely two-year-old child, and uh, this child was try- was holding a glue stick, just like that little child on the cover, in a stabbing grip, and she was pressing it very hard, and the glue all curled around the edges, and um, mom kept saying, don't press too hard, don't press too hard. Um, and the child was trying very hard to understand what she was talking about. Um, and looking up every time she said that, she was looking up um, at her mum. And to me, that was the moment that I could step in because the mum looked at me and she said, oh, she's just so pig-headed, you know. And I said, no, she's actually trying to understand you. That is why she stops and she looks at you, but she doesn't know what you mean. Those words have no meaning. What means press? What means hard? And what means pressing too hard? Um, And so then I said to the mother, just watch me. And I held my hand out and I touched the child's hand. And I said, this is a glue stick. And then I touched my hand and I said, put the glue stick in my hand. And the child did just that. She put a glue stick in my hand. And I held the glue stick, not in a stabbing grip, but just between thumb and my other three fingers. And I pressed it first really hard on the paper, the same as she did. And I said, this is pressing hard. 
And then I held it very gently and I talked very softly to her and I said, this is pressing gently. And then I gave it back to her and I said, I like you to press it gently. And she did exactly that. Then I said to the mum, if you offer something to your child in opposites and you show what you want the child to copy last, that is what she will remember and that is what she will copy. And that's why it works. Sometimes there is more going on than meets the eye. Frauke is a natural storyteller, as you can probably tell. So we're going to get to more of her stories in a minute. But first, I wanted to share with you this tip. It's so simple and so perfect. If you are right-handed and you want to show a little child or anyone for that matter what your hands are doing, have that person sit on your left-hand side so they have a clear view of your hand and what your fingers are doing and how you are holding whatever it is you have in your hand. If they're sitting across from you, then they're looking at the back of your hands. This approach takes all the guesswork out of the lesson. And let's be honest, parenting is like a hands-on personal developmental course. We need all the help we can get. When you are the husband, you feel so responsible for your wife and your child that you can't think of anything else. And when you are the mother, you feel so responsible for that little baby that you can't think of anything else. But you both have to work at making a living as well. And so how do you do that? And there are bills to pay. And there is a house to clean. And this is to be done. And, and, and laundry to be hung up. And, you know, all those things. And it is, it is a lot. Where it's just a lot. And um, because it has been done for millions of years doesn't mean that every new parent um, has been born with the book of directions already stamped into the head. No, you have to start from scratch every time. Her book is laid out in chapters, but they're not laid out sequentially, so you can pick and choose the stories at will. This particular story does happen to be at the beginning. Chapter one, paying attention. Lynn comes to the playgroup with her 16-month-old toddler, Chelsea. Chelsea wanders through the room and is attracted by the painting easel with a sheet of paper clipped on and ready to use. The child grabs a brush from one of the pots of paint on a tray underneath and jabs the paper with the brush. Her mother stops her in her tracks. What do you want to do today? Do you want, you want to play with the farm animals? No. Um, you, um, you want to play at the sink? The child turns. Lynn says, no, no, not now. You'll get wet. Oh, um, you want to paint? Okay, let's put a smock on you first. Mom holds Chelsea away from the easel and takes a smock off the hook with her other hand. There, now you can paint and you won't get dirty. Red, why don't you use yellow? Make a painting for Daddy. No, no, not outside the paper. Lynn grabs the child's hand and guides it towards the middle of the paper. Here, on the paper. All the while, little Chelsea has barely moved from where she's standing. When a grown-up keeps prattling on, most of what is said becomes background noise. By the time the child has acquired verbal language, she has also learned to tune out most of it. Chelsea is 16 months old. She is still walking with a typical toddler gait, with a slight sway from side to side. She has not yet acquired verbal language as a means of communication and is still very much discovering her physical environment the things around her and what she can do with them. It is worth remembering that children under three learn most from what they see. It's therefore advisable to to show children first how something is done or used, back it up with the language and then sit back and observe. For example, how does your child hold an item? How much of the demonstration was retained? It takes an adult on average about three weeks of intensive practice to retain new information. With patience, clear demonstration and a friendly voice, a child often learns much quicker than that. The examples and vignettes in the book are all true to life and they're based on nearly 30 years of observations and interactions with very young kids. Frauke says parenting requires your conscious behavior. Stick to the here and now of the situation at hand when you're interacting with your child. Rather than thinking about things like, why is this happening? Or, what is this child trying to do to me? 
It's easier said than done, and it does take practice, but it's more than worth the effort. Her book is called How to Hold a Glue Stick and Other Clues to Parenting by Frauke M. Matthews, and it's available from Balboa Press. You can also find it online at all the other usual places, Amazon.com and Barnes & Noble. And that will do it for this edition of Newsgram from webtalkradio.com. Newsgram.